Alright, that's welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Tom Harlock and I do not have an intro, but I do have impeccable taste. And if I'm honest, I owe it all down to being British. The foreskin locks in the flavour. And speaking of nightmarish throbbing, my spinal cord has an awful pain running through it. Must be from carrying the entirety of 2020 on my shoulders. And what a bloody year it's been, eh? An unprecedented shocker, you could call it. Well, not to me, if I'm honest. I know they say the world was created in his vision, but perhaps it slipped your mind. I'm partially sighted. Entering this fresh decade, many of us had our sights set on a new world. Dramatic change. Well, as the ancient proverb reads, be careful what you wish for, because you just might get it. Don't say the pussycat dolls didn't try and warn ya. For today's video, I thought it would be best to close the chapter on 2020 by recapping the year month by month, highlighting the best, the biggest and the most bizarre moments from the online world. But before I start this video, I did enter the year hoping, anticipating and bloody deserving to hit the magical million subscriber mark. And I did it because I'm capable of anything. And I managed to coerce enough of you to press a virtual button online. And if you think that's gonna stop now, well, maybe. I do like to emotionally edge. First up, January and oh God, Everything's on fire. The Australian bushfire season went mental this year, causing in excess of $100 billion worth of damage. Bloody hell. Best get Kylie Minogue on the only fans, boys. <laughs> and speaking of a battered down under, Nick Ocado Avocado, the muckbanger most known for stuffing his face and being a grotesque mess, found himself in hot water this January, but don't get your hopes up. It wasn't a bath. Ever since bursting onto the scene with Trisha Paytas, Zach Choi, and Stephanie So drama from 2019, Nick Accardo has been the big dense entertainment piñata that keeps on giving, no matter how hard he gets pounded. And trust me, I've seen the leaked clips on Twitter all right. His arsehole looks like somebody microwaved a sweet potato for half an hour and fucking shot it. <laughs> Gape to the side, it was his relationship with his husband Orlin that caused the most concern. Full of dramatic tiffs and food fights. This is so good for my life. 2020 saw the couple finally part ways. Well, for a bit anyway. In a video titled We Broke Up, Nick explained that Orlin left him due to the disruption YouTubers caused their marriage. All of your comments are seeping into his head. Yeah, mate, I'm sure the comments were the problem and it had absolutely nothing to do with you going from this. Eat from the earth and you will feel alive. To this. Oh, Nicholas, dry your eyes, mate. I'm sure with your diet, your tears are 90% hydrogenated fat and we wouldn't want your chins to come out in a rash now, would we? <laughs> and speaking of coming out, Beauty guru Nikki Tutorials revealed via a YouTube video that she was being held hostage over information regarding her being trans. The video, which has over 35 million views, centers around Nikki taking back control of the situation by laying out the information herself. Because it's time for me to be truly me for all of you. The reaction from the community was overwhelmingly positive, with James Charles declaring his love, Shane Dawson declaring his pride, and Jeffree Star releasing an exclusive statement to my channel. <clears throat> Blackmail is an awful thing, and if I'm honest, black females aren't that much better. <sighs> and speaking of, YouTube's own reanimated corpse, Jeffree Star, revealed in January that his relationship with long-term boyfriend Nate has collapsed. I don't even know where to begin. Um, there's no easy way to say this, but we did break up. In a video posted January 11th, Jeffrey revealed he was gutted to have lost his soulmate because Nate was one of the only men bold and brave enough to love him publicly for who he truly is. I... Oh. <sighs> Oh mate, don't cry. There's plenty more Horcruxes in the sea. Jeffrey has come with a fire over the last couple of years for his extensive handbag collection, mainly because a lot of them feature exotic and illegal leather skins. If I'm honest, I don't particularly care about Jeffrey's bag selection. I mean, he needs something to put on his head for when those guys shag him. On to February and love is in the air. And it smells like halitosis. So this is um, mouthwash. And I got you a cute toothbrush. This your breath is not um, pretty. 
This year we were introduced to star-crossed lovers 54-year-old Ed and 23-year-old Rose from TLC's 90 Day Fiancé. 90 Day Fiancé and its various spin-offs is a reality television show documenting the relationships between international lovers, named after the 90 days where an American and their partner must marry once entering the United States on a K-1 visa. American Ed and Filipina Rose featured on season 4 of Before the 90 Days, which showed the couple meeting for the first time in her native country. I noticed that your legs were kind of like mine. <laughs> they were hairy. But, yeah. And as you can imagine, it was an absolute RTA. I don't think I can stay here again. You can. From his hair care routine to, well, literally every aspect of his personality, the world shared a collective but brief moment of joy as we all cyber bully dead. And if I'm honest, I think that was the last time we knew peace as a universe. It's recently been revealed that Rose and Ed have split, with Rose leaving him for a woman. I just want to know if the girl got a green card. Poor lass deserves it after dealing with Helmin Head over there. Also in February, Jake Paul called us poor, and that's bad. But luckily, he can change that for us. All we need to do is give him money. Announcing his latest scheme, the financial freedom movement, essentially you pay $20 to Jake Paul for him and a team of marketing experts to teach you how to be a social media star. Our future is in our hands. Are you with me? Cheers for the offer, mate, but I'd rather have Ellen Keller walk me across the M5. The website states that the course is not for people looking for a magic pill to success, because there isn't one. Ooh, sounds like somebody's never been 13 in the back of a transit van going 60 in a 30, drinking John Smith's and being peer pressured to chew a disco biscuit. <laughs> Live a little Jakey, you may enjoy it. According to an interview with Vanity, Jake left school early, opting to finish his diploma online. I just got the answers from a cheat sheet and put it in, and didn't have to do any of the work. <laughs> Well, that explains a lot, doesn't it? Jake's been at the centre of so many controversies, I just wish the boy would take a day off. Relax, mate. Have a bath. Watch some countdown. Wear your hand like a glove. Administer yourself a colonoscopy. I don't particularly care. And speaking of being up Jake Paul's arse, Tana Mongo brings us into March with the return of her critically acclaimed MTV series, Tana No Filter. The first series documented her embarrassing marriage to Jake Paul, whereas the second focused on Tana just being a complete bullbag. It's not funny, though. People die from that as well. Go kill me. I don't care at all. There's nothing you can say to make me care and I'm not going to pretend to care. With MTV having the final edit, Tana with the dry hair was shown to be ungrateful, careless, and just an all-round fucking nightmare. I know. Shocking, in it. Who would have thought? Other cinematic masterpieces released in March included Netflix's documentary The Tiger King, focusing on Joe Exotic, Carol Baskin, and a zoo full of big cats. A true crime story embedded within a tale of romance, The Tiger King become a pop culture juggernaut, resulting in Carol Baskin doing a stint on Dancing with the Stars, Joe Exotic doing a 22-year prison sentence, and me blocking absolutely anybody on my timeline doing that fucking TikTok dance. Don't get me wrong, I'm all for people having fun, but actually no I'm not. But saying that, I would rather watch everybody in their nan pop it and lock it on TikTok than for a second watch celebrities try and make me feel something by releasing a version of John Lennon's Imagine. Imagine there's no heaven. Ugh, sorry gang, the only thing you're inspiring me to do is perforate my eardrum. And the theme of celebrities being completely out of touch with reality is continued through to April, with the now infamous mugshot challenge making the rounds online. James Charles and gamer girl Karina Kopp were amongst the influencers who decided it would be a great idea to blacken their eyes, bloody their nose and post photos online all during a time in which the disproportionate incarceration of non-white people was pretty central to general Western discourse. Clever move, lads. Well done. Other tasteless events from March include, well, every meal that Anne Boleyn Reed consumed. Anne Boleyn, who runs in this walks and sits in the same mukbang circles as Nick Ocado, found herself at the mercy of the internet's sharpest tool in the box. Me! In a beautifully crafted video, I documented the life and controversies of YouTube's biggest... That's it. That's the sentence. And speaking of sentences, locked in a mental prison is how Trisha Paytas has been living, apparently, when she revealed to the world that she has a personality disorder, causing her to switch into different people. And luckily for us, the whole thing was caught on camera. And I don't... I don't even give a fuck if people call me crazy. Like... 
Bloody hell, Trisha. As long as one of those personalities runs a brush for your hair, I'm not particularly arse, darling. You crack on. And speaking of switching things up, after years of consistent uploads, David Dobrik shocked the world when he announced an unspecified hiatus from YouTube. I'm doing this because I, I just need more time to do other stuff. Like, I want to take more meetings for things. I want to say yes to other opportunities. But I can't because I'm literally, like, constricted by the videos. Best known for his generous vlogs wherein he gifts strangers cars, friends homes, and money to just about anybody who looks poor and grateful on camera. I do like David. I've met him a couple times. Nice enough chap. But I couldn't imagine being in the pub with him, ordering rounds with David Dobrik. He's getting bottle service and sparklers and shit, and I'm trying to order four Sambucas for a tenner on the Spoons app. Just wouldn't work, would it, boys? David, mate, you've had many years at the top of your game. You deserve a break. Put your feet up. And something tells me you're gonna love life as a bottom. <laughs> and speaking of, girl to find, Husbands rimmed. As May saw controversial Christian YouTubers Girl Define cause a rumble in the jungle, terminally bullied Christian bloggers Christian and Beth describe themselves as just two sisters striving to be God defined in a culture defined world. <laughs> Essentially, they have a go at you for showing too much ankle, and if you give a sloppy BJ, it will send you straight to hell. Hey, it's Kristen and Bethany here with Girl Defined Ministries, and in today's vlog, we're going to be talking about why Christian girls should be beautiful, but not seductive. After years of preaching their overbearing values, it was revealed this year that Bethany's husband David had potentially attended conversion therapy. Twice! Poor lad. All he wanted was a dick, and now he's ended up with a twat. And speaking of, Lele Pons debuted her latest artistic piece, a YouTube original titled The Secret Life of Lele Pons. <laughs> the secret? Who the fuck cares? I need to be strong because a lot of people are going through worse things than I am, and a lot of people love me, and a lot of people are my fans, and they look up to me because they're like, you're so strong. Yeah, me too, darling. <laughs> you're preaching to the choir. In the series, Lele revealed a myriad of experiences that's made her the woman she is today, from OCD to Tourette's, to a rare musculoskeletal disorder that's left her without a single funny bone in her body. In other main news, Colleen Ballinger, aka Miranda Sings, aka that irritating dickhead who can't put on lipstick, found herself addressing an incident that that took place in 2016, where she sent a gift to an underage fan. The gift being her bra and knickers. Seemingly, it was a big old joke, but I still don't get it. If you don't want something you've purchased, you can just return it for a refund. Just ask the Stalfers. <laughs> Family vlogging couple Micah and James found themselves at the centre of the Tom Harlock hit piece in May when I revealed, well, I didn't reveal, everyone fucking knew about it, but I just love stirring the pot, how they returned their adopted son. This is by far the hardest video James and I have ever publicly had to make. Fortunately for the kid, it's been announced that he's settling in with a new family. And fortunately for me, that video was sponsored, so... Thanks for the turtlenecks, I guess. And the emancipation of Jojo Siwa brings us into June. Five foot nine, 17 year old Jojo is known for entertaining children with her eclectic style, but she shocked the world this summer when she dressed her age. Bloody hell, she wouldn't survive a day in a British secondary school, would she? <laughs> this was me when I was 16, bearing, boofing, and boosting, living the dream. Wouldn't catch me dead with a bow in my hair. Perhaps an edgy bandana, though, or oh, somebody else is sick. Moving on, somebody who doesn't care what you look like at 16, because at that point you're probably a bit too old for them anyway. Lock up your kids, lock up your pets. At this point it's probably just easier to lock him up. Mr. Shane Dawson. After it was revealed by YouTube drama channel Ashley Kyle that she had been receiving tip-offs and information behind the scenes from Jeffree Star. Um, then he sent me a picture and said his eyes are so dead it's haunting. Including messages that indicate Shane Dawson and Jeffree were perhaps helped orchestrate the infamous cancellation of James Charles in 2019. The internet did what the internet does best. Put two and two together and get six, six, six. If you cast your mind back to 2019, Jeffrey and Shane collaborated on a now heavily reduced eyeshadow palette under Jeffrey's cosmetic brand. Crikey, that name's a bit prophetic, isn't it? Age like old cunt. The creation was documented via an obtuse YouTube series on Shane's channel and it launched a record-breaking sales. Reportedly, over 1 million pallets were sold, making in excess of $35 million. Everything's great. Mental, innit? The power of the internet. God, I couldn't imagine a single other beauty guru selling that much shite. Well, 
other than perhaps James Charles. It doesn't take Derek Akora to work out what went on here, especially seeing as the beauty industry is extremely lucrative and also more competitive than me during my waitering days. We used to have competitions to see who could get the most tips and I would exclusively fill out my section with middle-aged women, rest my ball sack on the table whilst taking their orders and exchange my coin purse for theirs. <laughs> I'd win every shift. Shane and Jeffrey wanted James out of the equation so they could sell more pallets, and well, at least that's what everyone on the internet thought, including Shane apparently, prompting him to release a notes app post to Twitter addressing the rumours. In the note, Shane denied being integral to Tatty's Bye Sister video, as well as saying James needed to be served a slice of humble pie the size of the Empire State Building, amongst the plethora of other bollocks. Not exactly satisfied with his silly little note, the internet said, baby, we're gonna frack the truth, and thus begun a collective methodical sifting of absolutely everything the man posted online. And my god, I can pre-drink two bottles of wine and chong a fatty before I even get to the pub, and I feel like the human embodiment of health. But even reading the things that this man had done to animals absolutely turned my fucking stomach. From a web series featuring a child puppet whose main personality trait was being oblivious to the fact that Shane wanted to put more than just his hand up her to, well, this. YouTube's golden boy found his career crumbling. On the 27th, Shane uploaded a video titled Taking Accountability and Diddy Fuck. If you've been watching me for a while, then you know that I have done a lot of things in my past that I hate. But what he did do is delete videos exceeding a combined view count of 1 billion in an effort to dampen the flames of the furnace. <laughs> but unfortunately for Shane, the storm was far from over. During the excavation of Shane's past, a video resurfaced wherein he demonstrates shooting ropes over a picture of Willow Smith advertising her song Whip My Hair. You know, the one she released when she was 10 years old. All the drama prompted responses from actual famous people, Jada Pinkett Smith and her son Jaden, who cremated what was ever left of Shane's career. With mainstream media picking up on the headline, American retail giant Target removing his books from their shelves, and YouTube taking ads away from his channel, it appeared the legacy of Shane Dawson was officially dead and buried. And then Tati Westbrook decided to come along, pull down her sensible but flirty pants, and piss all over his grave. It's been a long time coming. All right, love, calm down. It's called Brewer's Droop and it happens to the best of us, yeah. And to be honest, she could have made an effort. On the 30th of June, Tati uploaded a video titled Breaking My Silence. In this, she explained Shane and Jeffrey manipulated her to post her original expose, Bye Sister, from 2019. You know, the video that temporarily ended James Charles and aged like a progeria sufferer. <laughs> Immediately after Tati posted, we were treated to Shane's reaction via Instagram Live. This is insane. This is insane. This person literally and to put it mildly the lad seemed a little bit unhinged as a victim of abuse myself oh my really god terrifying. you are so manipulative oh and whilst this was all going on Liza Koshi apologized for her offensive portrayal of stereotypes and Jenna Marbles decided to quit the internet <laughs> It was a long month, all right. <laughs> July next, and with a global economic recession on the brink, the leaders of the world said, let them eat cake, but only if it's made by an underpaid minority. Historic food magazine and popular YouTube series Bon Appetit was at the centre of a media frenzy this summer, when huge pay discrepancies revealed white members of staff made more money for often less contribution. With fan favourite Claire Saffitz creating her own channel, other prominent members leaving in solidarity, and Bon Appetit's editor-in-chief resigning in shame, it was a recipe for disaster, leaving a sour taste in viewers' mouths. <laughs> but say what you want about Bon Appetit, at least when they made a cake, it was a fucking cake and wasn't cosplaying as some stupid household object. I've got enough trust issues as it is, yeah. I haven't made a single friend this year out of fear I'd fall in love, only for them to metamorphosize into a caterpillar cake. <clears throat> and speaking of hidden horrors, Amberlynn Reed shared with the world a diagnosis of stage 1 uterine cancer this year, resulting in a hysterectomy. Fortunately, Amberlynn has appeared to make a full recovery, so... Congratulations on the weight loss, I guess. August next, and copy-paste TikTok stars the Varos twins honestly just did my job for me. I've been campaigning against twins since I posted a video last year where I critiqued their... Well, their very existence, if I'm honest. Solidifying my opinions, the Varos twins answered some questions on Instagram story this year, resulting in the now infamous mispronunciation of the creator of the Mona Lisa, the father of the new renaissance, mm, and the world's most celebrated artist. 
Da Vinci? Listen, yeah, I don't want to be that guy, but I was bullying these boys before it was cool. And speaking of bullying, the Wave House, a TikTok content house funded by investors, was launched in August. Set in a beautiful multi-million pound estate, the members were periodically revealed via TikTok, leaving us with a lot of questions. <laughs> like mainly, who the fuck are these people? And why is this last bathing in a vat of four all come? Do you remember? when the world went to shit in September. <laughs> With the restaurant industry on the brink of collapse in Britain, a government initiative, Eat Out to Help Out, was launched, a scheme in which the government offered to contribute towards the cost of the nation's meals in an effort to pump money into the industry. I understand Americans watching this may find the concept of the government helping out its citizens a little bit foreign. However, don't despair. There is a USA equivalent of Eat Out to Help Out. I believe you call it Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> and speaking of the talk show Titan, after a year of seemingly endless revelations regarding the talk show host's professional conduct being a little bit queer, September saw Ellen's return to the airwaves. Prefacing her first episode back with a dramatic monologue, Ellen said, mm, I'm sorry you feel that way. Whoopsie. Whoopsie, you bloody joking, darling. I've barely forgiven you for stealing my look. You're on thin ice as it is. And speaking of bald blonde nightmares, not to be outdone, Tana Mongo decided to do what she does best, and also simultaneously worst, when she decided to apologise for, well, God knows, let's be honest. Couldn't take her seriously, Lass looks like a bloody inpatient. I want to express my utter disgust with every single apology video I've ever made. Well yeah, at least we agree on something, love. I must admit, the video confused me a little bit, because when you're in an institution like that, I didn't think you're allowed to have anything dangerous on your person. Yet Tana sat there happily with facial filler sharper than Jeffrey's teeth before the veneers. And speaking of, a damning article by Insider obliterated whatever was left of Mr. Star's public persona in September. One thing that I don't understand is how on earth this man became a leading figure in the beauty industry to start with. I've seen more attractive yeast infections. It's October next, the month of Halloween, spooks and all that, and YouTuber Glam and Gore, aka Mikey, is about to get the shock of her life. <laughs> Mikey is best known for her liquid latex use, shagging Anthony Padilla, and being very rock hand emoji. But in October, her former best friend and fellow YouTuber Swoop added arsehole and racist to that already pretty embarrassing list of personality traits. <laughs> and embarrassment seems to be the flavour of the month when Drama Channel without a crystal ball found herself at the subject of a lawsuit from YouTuber Tatty Westbrook. Bloody hell. Have a day off, Tatty love. Jesus Christ, I'm sick of saying your name. After posting more videos this year about Tati than I have on my entire YouTube channel, Without a Crystal Ball has been accused of doing a bit too much, including paying to access Tati's and her family's personal data. Ooh, bet she didn't see that coming. If I'm honest, this whole situation confuses me, because surely, if she spent so much bloody time doing her research and watching Tati's videos, she'd have half a clue how to blend the fucking eyeshadow. Winter, spring, summer, or fall. Or you have to do is call her. and I'll be there, yes I will, to watch Trisha Paytas bully children online. In November, TikTok's biggest star, Charlie D'Amelio, known for doing this, and her sister Dixie, known for being Charlie's sister, posted a YouTube video wherein they taste tested crazy foods. <laughs> and before you knew it, Trisha Paytas was jumping down their throat. After Trisha called the gals entitled on TikTok and further elaborating on her dislike for them via the Frenemies podcast with H3's Ethan Klein, a back and forth ensued. And to be honest, if you watch the whole dinner, they're extremely disrespectful to their parents. Personally, I don't have an issue with the D'Amelio sisters, but I am getting a little bit sick and tired of these TikTok stars getting ridiculously famous for essentially just flailing their limbs around. I'm so sorry, darling, and no offence, but I've seen more coordination and rhythm in a fucking epileptic seizure. Finally, we're on to December, and all I want for Christmas is Jake Paul to lose his two front teeth. And thankfully, my dream may come true, as Mr. Paul has extended an invitation to Irish fighter Conor McGregor. But as my dream is coming true, a nightmare is on the horizon for e-gamer and popular streamer Dream, after his record-breaking Minecraft game was called- I can't believe I've just said that sentence. After his record-breaking Minecraft game was called into question due to its improbable nature. And if you think that's the most embarrassing news of the year, let me introduce you to Gabby DiMartino. Gabby is a Zoella type, all bath bombs and houseplants and shit. Known for her YouTube channel Gabby Vlogs, However, it was a joint venture alongside her sister Nikki that turned her into a YouTube regular. 
Yeah, they're twins. I could just add my point here, really, couldn't I? Let's be honest. Recently, the 25-year-old twins have been focusing on celebrity look-alike videos, with Gabby often being compared to a Wish.com Ariana Grande. Many people have accused Gabby of impersonating Ariana to such an extent that it borders on obsession, insinuating that she perhaps doesn't even have a personality of her own. And to that I say, what on earth do you expect? She is a literal twin. Genetic disasters and Ariana Grande cosplay to the side, Gabby found herself in hot water this December when she posted a video to her OnlyFans. The video was advertised as a sneak peek at her removing her knickers, but when they paid the $3 fee, users found themselves with a little bit more than they bargained for. <laughs> Mainly reasonable grounds for arrest. Because although the video Gabby shared was definitely her half naked, it was also her as a child. Jesus Christ, love. Gabby later apologised, claiming the whole thing was a massive joke. This video is going to touch on a very serious topic. Sure, love. The only thing that's a fucking joke here is you. Log off, delete your account, give your head a wobble. <laughs> and wrapping off the year, YouTube announced they will no longer be creating a rewind for 2020. And in retaliation, YouTuber Michelle Carr decided to release her own version on December the 10th. The musical, however, was torn apart by the internet for making a mockery of Jenna Marbles leaving the platform. Parodying lines taken from a goodbye video. I'm being requested that I address things that I've done in my past. It was not my intention to do what I did. Ugh. And on that flat note, I think that's all the time I've got for today's video. But you have to let me know down below in the comments your thoughts and feelings on 2020. Do you think I missed out on any significant events? <laughs> if so, I did it on purpose. I'm omnipotent, don't you know? Thank you so much for watching this video and cheers for supporting all my videos throughout this year. I don't need your compliments and your positive reinforcement, but if I'm honest, I am a big fan of it. So thank you very much and keep it coming. Stay out of trouble and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.